Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to walk through the steps of verifying base timing on an LS motor from the factory. Uh, there is no way to do this. There's no timing marks on the crank pulley. There's no, you know, adjustments or anything. But when you start working in the aftermarket, you get an aftermarket pulley like the ATI that we have. Uh, there's timing marks on there. So we need to walk through the steps of adding a timing pointer, verifying top dead center on our piston. Uh, go ahead and set a solid timing in the holly. So I think we'll use 13 degrees or something so it's not bouncing around at idle. And then we'll verify that that is the timing that we see with a timing light. From there, we can make sure that when we're putting 15, 20, 25 degrees of timing in our tune, that is in fact what, we, what we're what we getting out of it. Um, you know, you wanna check this uh, just to make sure that it is correct. If you think you're putting some in there and maybe it's behind, you know, you're, you could be potentially losing power uh, maybe you're kind of on the edge of the tune, think you've got, you know, a certain degree in there and you're actually putting two or three more in there. So kind of a crucial step when you really start pushing a motor to the edge, especially on these LSs, you want to make sure that your timing's right. Cause it could be a difference of, you know, driving it back on the trailer or having your buddies push it on the trailer. So let's get started and check out the process. so there are a few tools that we need to complete this job um, I have an ARP crank bolt so we need a 27 millimeter 12 point socket corresponding half inch ratchet uh, I'll use a small screwdriver to verify top dead center on piston cylinder one we've got a six millimeter t-bolt handle to install the bolts needed for the timing pointer uh, we've got a 5 16 quarter ratchet to adjust the timing pointer itself uh, 13 millimeter deep socket with a 3 8 ratchet and extension for removing the bolts off the timing cover and then of course I've got a uh, spark plug socket set here to remove the spark plug so we can verify that and then of course the most important tool of this is our timing light also here's a quick look at the motion raceworks timing pointer as you can see here this is our physical pointer um, I bought this piece. I've had it for a while, but I actually have not installed it on this new motor. So we need to go ahead and take care of that. It's a pretty simple process. We'll walk through. It bolts to the same location as your front timing cover. We'll remove two bolts and place these spacers in here and set that on there. And the nice thing about this piece is it does have these two bolts where you can move this slider back and forth to get yourself exactly on top dead center, which we'll walk through that process as well. Again, this is a Motion Raceworks piece, and if you want to get one of these for yourself, check out 269motorsports.com and get one today. Okay, so we're looking from underneath the bottom of the car. There is our ATI Super Damper, and if you look close, there's the numbers I was talking to. So you can see down here, 180, so that puts our top dead center up here. Two bolts that are utilized are this bottom corner and then the one just above up there. So I'm going to remove those and install the timing pointer and then we'll check to see how close we are if we need to adjust it at all. Okay so here's our timing pointer. I've got our spacers and bolts, washers. This is snug down and we can always adjust it. So once we get it on there if we see it's off we can move it from here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and slide this up there. Hopefully it'll, I can get it through there with this. Um, and then just hand tighten it and then we'll tighten it down all the way.
Okay, simple enough. Let's get a better look. Bottom bolt and the top bolt. So it just fits in there, you know, nice and snug. I think when I had a factory alternator bracket, I did have to trim the inside for this to fit. Um, but with the aftermarket ICT, there's obviously no problem. You can see the pointer up there. One thing I will make a note of when you go to order one of these, um, it needs to be for the correct spacing. So this one is set up for the F body spacing, uh, F body GTO, I believe. Do make sure that if you have the Corvette spacing, you need to make sure you get the correct pointer. I think the main difference is just here with the spacers. So let's go up top and see where we're at. All right, step one, we're gonna go ahead and pull out spark plug number one, cylinder number one, which if you're not familiar is the driver's side. So go ahead and get your spark plug socket on there. Shouldn't be too bad. It's actually a new tool, new kit I bought. It's got swivel, swivel end on it as well as three different extensions. I think I got it on eBay or Amazon. Um, and there's a magnet, so super easy. Really not much to it as far as that goes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start on the top, um, getting this thing set up for top dead center. Again, on the ATI pulley, there are timing marks all the way around from zero, top dead center, uh, 360, way, 360 degrees all the way around. And so I've got my 27 millimeter socket on the crank bolt and we're going to go ahead and turn this over by hand and at the same time I'm going to take my screwdriver, put it into the uh, spark plug hole of cylinder number one and what I'm feeling for is that piston coming up, right? So it's going to slowly come up and then go back down. We could possibly be in a situation where it's going down first and then we'll come back up. But you'll have to feel for it and then, um, you know, obviously the piston comes up twice, so you want to make sure that you're on top dead center, not 180 around. So uh, we'll make sure to verify that by looking at the timing mark when I feel it's up uh, at the very top. So let's go ahead and turn this thing over and feel for that. And then once that's verified, we can start working on the bottom. The other method here, of course, is using the piston stop, which you screw into the spark plug hole. Turn the motor over. Once it stops, make a mark on your balancer, turn it completely the other way, it'll stop again, and you take those two marks and look for the center, and that's your top dead center. With the screwdriver method, I'm simply looking for where the piston is at absolute top. Okay, piston's starting to come up. Judging where the mark is on the on the pulley and knowing where the timing uh, pointer is going to be sitting really close. So I'd say we've got it right. So let's just keep going until the uh, cylinder is all the way at the top. That looks to be right. All right, so at this point, I went ahead and just put the spark plugs back in because I did take them out. It just makes it a lot easier to turn the motor over. Um, you know, the screwdriver work, screwdriver method works. It's just very tedious. Make sure you're right on the money. I actually was able to get a light in there and look at it myself. Uh, but they do make a piston stop, which is probably the better way to go. So uh, for future use, I'll probably put one of those uh, in the old toolbox. But anyways, let's take a look at where we're at. I did make an adjustment on the pointer and then um, we'll go ahead and get it set up in the holly and get this thing uh, checked to see where we're at. Okay, so there's our timing pointer. And like I said, I did adjust the screws. Now let's see if we can get in here and get a look. It's gonna be really difficult to see. Um, I don't know, can you guys, oh, there we go. There you go. So there's the pointer right there on top dead center. And all I did was just adjust those two little bolts to move it because it was a little bit off based on what I was finding. So now, like I said, um, let me show you guys how to set it up in the holly, but we'll get the car started. You essentially lock the timing and then we hook up the timing gun and hopefully it's the same 
or maybe it's not and uh, maybe we'll find some power. All right, so when you go to set the static timing, you want to have the car running and be linked to the Holly, of course, with here. And at that point, you can go over here to sync with the ECU and use the drop down. Obviously, I don't have the car running right now, so I can show you guys this. But you would have it running. You come down here to enable static timing check. Click that. And at that point, you can enter your static timing value. I like to use 15 because the ATI balancer has uh, five degree increments that are really easy to see. You put your number in there and hit set and at that point the ECU will lock the timing at whatever timing you put in there and then you'll move over to check it on the timing light. So I'll go ahead and um, get everything set up with the timing light, show you guys that and then we will check to see where we're at. Alright so you'll take your timing light, put the clamp around the number one spark plug wire and then you need to put your, um, of course your leads on positive battery and ground if you have your battery up front you know connected to that or whatever post there is um, I've got mine down there in the back of the alternator post for positive and then we'll ground this dude on the stud and then all we got to do is aim it down there and see what we get so let's get the car started and see what kind of numbers we get out of this thing Okay guys, so it was kind of hard to tell, but when we had it 15, it was bouncing right between 14 and 15. I changed it to 20, same thing, 19 or 20. So it could be a little bit of a difference between the screwdriver top dead center method and what it actually was. It's close enough that I'm not concerned about it. I don't think it's any kind of issue causing us any problems. So um, again, it's pretty easy. Not a, lot of, not a lot to it, but something good to check. Um, if you have any questions, comment below. Uh, I'm sure having the uh, piston stop would make things a little easier but if you need to you can figure it out it's a pretty easy job so thanks for watching i've got a whole bunch of other how-to videos on the channel check those out and if you haven't subscribed be sure to do that and we'll catch you on the next one thanks